Welcome to the GTN show and welcome finally to James Kunimer. We're delighted to finally have you here. Now we're not going to talk about it too much, but well done for surviving 10 days of hotel quarantine with three kids. Surely that's got to be harder than an Ironman. Uh, yeah, we're still not talking about that, so let's just move swiftly along. Well, as I said, we're delighted to have you here and for a big week of news. Yeah, we have uh, Jan and Lionel setting up a uh, mono a mono tri triathlon battle. Uh, we have Olympic selection news and uh, some guy ran a really, really fast half marathon in Crocs. Yeah, apparently they're making a bit of comeback, these old Crocs. Mm. Well, we also have a stacked weekend of racing to talk through, plus some super shoes from On Running. Right, time to take a plunge into all the great things that we've seen on the internet this past week. And I've got a bit of a gem to start us off with. It's got some choice words, but enjoy this, folks. Going out for a run and I am having such fun. Gotta, gotta be fast because I want to win. Now I'm off for a swim. It is easy as because it's only a swim. Yes, it's only a swim. I'm in front of the race. There's a smile on my face because I'm nearing the end and I'm beating my friends. And as I cross the finish line, I'm pretty sure that I have won. Now that the judges have their thumbs down, what the f The referee is telling me and I lose control. Well, I'm not sure the killers would approve of that cover version, but he, he gave it a good go. A little bit less fun news from the internet. Uh, Lottie Miller had a pretty bad accident uh, a couple of weeks back on the velodrome uh, doing some testing and she's, she's cracked her chin. Um, she qualified for the Olympics, so we wish her a speedy recovery and hopefully she can still get to that start line. Yeah, bad timing. And talking of speedy recovery, also we spoke about Richard Murray on the channel a few weeks back having had heart issues well it seems like he's had quite a quick operation and ablation of the heart to have that rectified and sorted hopefully but it does mean obviously he's getting to crunch time of the Olympics very close he's keeping a very open mind but I've got to say he's getting worryingly close to the Olympics to recover from a heart operation but like I said speedy recovery to Richard Murray on that one well back to the fun stuff now because uh, that was a bit heavy um a little warning of never to celebrate too early, like uh, this guy, Mateo Bustos, did from uh, in the Segunto Triathlon in Spain. He's definitely going to learn his lesson there. <laughs> it's quite pain. He's almost doing a side like getting the crowd <laughs> hyped up. And then, but that, I mean, I've got to say, the speed of that car coming past is quite impressive. He gave it a good kick, yeah, for sure. Uh, but uh, he definitely threw, threw the race away that Mateo <laughs> did. <laughs> and I think even you can hear his partner going, you idiot from the sideline. Yeah, anyway. there's definitely some choice words from the from the comp, from the commentary on the sideline. There, the uh, the spectators were not impressed with his <laughs> performance. Um, and to finish, I got to say I love this story from Marta Van Riel. He's also obviously watching the race in Kitzbühel this week. I believe it was the under 23 race. But it looks like one of the Spanish athletes lost their bike shoe, presumably coming out of T1, um, and did the entire bike portion without one of his bike shoes. So he's on. The SPD. Well, I hope it's an SPD, not a speed plane. Christ yeah, that would have been terribly painful. In fact, even the SPD would be terribly painful. I'm not <laughs> sure how he ran getting off that bike with that with his foot like that. Yeah, it's going to be very, very painful. Okay, as you guys know, we love a presenter challenge here on GTN, but we've come in with something new now. We're going to start doing these smaller presenter challenges more regularly. Um, we are sometimes going to challenge one another, the producers may challenge us, or you guys can get involved and challenge us over the comments. So we're getting stuck in this week with our first presenter challenge to welcome James into the channel. Yeah, thanks for welcoming me. Uh, so you give me a spares and a flat tyre? Yeah, you've probably guessed so. what it is. It is the quickest to change a tyre, or inner tube to be specific. Doesn't seem like that much of a challenge. Uh -huh. no, I do this all the time. I, know, I thought you'd say that, which is why. I've brought not just ties, these are meant to be blindfolds that we're going to wrap around. So we're going to be doing uh, tire changes blindfolded. Feeling confident? You can, you can have the lip. pelican, the pink pelican one. <laughs> I, I love it. It's, it's, it suit me. Yeah. Feeling confident? How's your tire changing 
Regardless of being blindfolded? Uh, I think I'm pretty good at it, so uh, I fancy my chances. I've never tried to do it blindfolded though, so... No, funny that. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, game on, let's get blindfolded. Alright. Okay. Um, do it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Oh, yeah, wait, hang on. Yeah, hold, on hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. Ah, no, lost my eye levers already. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm ready. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Not ready until I say we're ready. Okay. Um, you haven't taken the inner tube out yet, have you? No. Okay, wait. Cool. Well, I need to find out which end of the box is. Okay. All right. <laughs> Are we ready? Are you ready? Okay, three. Two, one, let's go. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> so tight. <tight. laughs> uh, is it tubeless tires? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, yours is tubeless. Mine's uh, got normal in tubeless. You sound like you're pumping it up already. Oh no. I've lost the tire lever. Oh no. <laughs> oh god, this is so stressful. <laughs> okay, we've got the tight. Oh my goodness, he's nailing it. I can. Oh, I can't find it. There you go. Oh, yeah? What? <laughs> Excuse the joke, sorry. If this was GCN presenters, they'd be sitting there with their hand up waiting for the team car. <laughs> no. <laughs> And I'm pumping. <laughs> Wait for the explosion. Uh, what pressure do we have to get to? Because I can't see the. <laughs> I can't, yeah. see the oh, I can't get this last bit. <laughs> oh, I'm in the mess. Oh, I... oh. can definitely ride that. Ah, oh, I think you've won. Didn't even get to pumping. I was doing so well. I don't know whether I'm even showing this to the camera uh, right now. You can take off now. <laughs> oh, we did well. Yeah, I, I, I just couldn't get that Tard final race. bit on. Tad race. <sighs> Good work. Good work. <laughs> what was your tactic for getting the tire on quicker? Or were you just luck? You just I didn't it? use tire levers. I just folded did the tire from the side. Play. I just. I, yeah, maybe I should have done that. Um, I managed to, I reckon I should get an extra point. I almost managed to line the um, 5,000 logo. Oh yeah, with, yeah, that would definitely be a bonus point. Mine's, uh, oh, you're mine's pretty close, pretty close. All oh, right, well. Pretty close. I'm okay, not sure. You. I'm not sure I'd ride that, that wheel without uh, <laughs> taking the tube out and, uh, and I, I reinstalling it. I definitely think I owed extra points. It was definitely a heavier wheel, just with the cassette on. No, nah, you know? excuses um, coming. Excuses that was a good point, mate. Well done. Yeah, Congrats. thanks. Wow. Well, um, well, send us your, uh, your ideas for some presenter challenges in the coming weeks. Um, give Mark a chance to win, maybe. Well, now for the Try News, and I guess we need to start by jumping back to Wednesday last week. Now, as our show went live, as did the US Olympic triathlon team selection, and we were all on the edge of our seat as to whether they were about to pick Katie Zafiris or Taylor Spivey. Well, it's probably not news to any of you by now, uh, but they did go for Katie Zafiris, um, which shouldn't really be a surprise to anybody. I mean, Katie Zafiris is one of the most accomplished women in the, in the triathlon field at the moment. Uh, but... Katie Zafiris has been a little bit off form lately and uh, in the last few races, particularly Yokohama, which was a test event, uh, she wasn't on form, finishing 22nd, I think. Um, and her country, countryman, uh, Taylor Spavi, has been on form uh, and she's the one who lost the slot to Katie Zafiris. So it's become a bit controversial. It really has. I mean, understand we Katie's, she's had a tough year. Um, her father passed and it's such a shame having seen her being the 2019 world champion. Um, I think she's had something like 12 wins, 30 podiums. Whereas Taylor Spivey hasn't had those top podium spots, but she's been incredibly consistent for the past couple of years. She's, well, basically been in the top 10 or top five 
for those past two years. She's even placed sixth at Leeds and fourth at Yokohama. Did and I get that course, the right way around? Yeah, yeah. and of course Yokohama <laughs> is the test event almost. It's the same conditions yeah. as Tokyo. Uh, so understandably, it's left a lot of people questioning whether this is the right decision. And I'd imagine Taylor rather upset. I, I would imagine she would be quite upset. But we'll see in a few weeks time whether the USA made the right decision there. So the final USA team then will be uh, Katie joining uh, Summer Rappaport and Taylor Nib on the women's side. And uh, Kevin McDowell will be joining Morgan Pearson on the men's side. Obviously only two spots qualified for the men. The USA has a bit of a history of controversial Olympic selections. Um, but we'll find out in a few weeks whether they made a good call, uh, even if the armchair critics aren't quite convinced yet. Well, they've done pretty well. They have a good track record. I mean, they've got Gwen Jorgensen having one in the past, so yeah. Only Gwen Jorgensen, maybe? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, the qualification window is now closed, but we do still have a few other nations yet to confirm their Olympic selection, one of which is Australia, which we're also very excited to hear about because they are the only nation to get the full roster of six athletes, three men and three women so stay tuned for that it's probably actually going to come out now between us filming the show and going live <laughs> to you guys so there we go you can get involved in the comment section down below so there'll be much more in the olympics to come in due course but moving on and how about this yan versus lionel rumor then now there's been quite a development since we last spoke about it in the show last week in fact after the show going live last week, I very quickly got a phone call from a very excited Talbot Cox, as he always is, <laughs> to tell me there's a lot more to these rumours. And they actually went ahead and did quite a unique Zwift ride along where they spilled all the beans and our very own Heather joined in. Okay, just a few minutes until kickoff. No, 40 seconds until Jan versus Lionel, the rumour ride. And I love a rumour, love a good rumour what is gonna come out of this. I'm gonna hopefully be able to read the comments whilst keeping up with these guys. Now, I've not been on the turbo for quite a while, so this could be a challenge, but I will do my best to keep you guys posted. It's exciting, it's gonna come out. Guys, right, a bit awkward at the moment because Jan hasn't turned up to the rumor ride. Um, so that's going to spread rumours, isn't it? I reckon he's on his way. There's a bit of chat coming from Lionel that, um, you know, he's just perfecting that latte art working in his cafe. But I'm sure we'll see him in a moment, but we're not hanging about here. It's supposed to be a chatty ride. I'm sure it's chatty for those guys, but anyway, can't wait to see what these rumours actually are. We've obviously got a bit of an inkling that Lionel and Jan are going to take each other on, but I'm super excited to hear the details. It's all going to be revealed in just a moment. Okay, coffee banter is over. Jan has joined. He did just say he was perfecting that final tamping. He had to just do a couple more taps on his coffee. So it's good to see that the banter is going both ways between these guys. And they're now starting to drip feed us some information. So it's going to be head to head. And Jan has alluded to it. That is going to be in Germany. Oh, and wow, he's found a course in a small town, and apparently they are going to close the motorway so that it can be a flat, fast route, which, according to the chat on here, should please Lionel, because there's no corners. And they've also decided there's going to be no drafting. So again, no one needs to come near Lionel's bike. That's obviously banter coming from Jan there. Um, so it sounds like it's getting quite serious. exciting bit they've just announced, which I think all of you guys will enjoy as much as I will, they are going to share all of their data live. So we will be able to see what power they're putting on the bike, what speed they're running at, what the heart rates are doing. And yeah, I think that's definitely a first, but we know your Lionel shares a lot, but to see Anne's numbers, it's going to be super exciting. So they've kind of shared all the serious stuff. There's still some banter there as to what's going to happen to who doesn't win. Will Jan have to appear in one of Lionel's videos? Well, Lionel have to work in Jan's coffee shop, but they have just ended it actually with a kind of serious chat that they are both going to push each other to the max and go for this record. So, yeah, can't wait to see this on the 18th of July. Lionel versus Jan, it's out there. 
Love to see what you guys think. Wow, the banter was pretty hot there. What do you think to this, James? Uh, it's interesting. It could be enthralling. I mean, it really could be. It could be a really interesting spectacle. Um, but there's a few caveats and there's a few questions still that they haven't answered, like how is it going to work, the logistics of it? Are they going to have a referee riding next to Jan to make sure he's not too close to the camera vehicle? I don't know. You know, there's lots of questions. Well, I that, think. that is really interesting because obviously at the end of the day, they're trying to make this a spectacle. So it's going to all be broadcast. And whilst they're saying they're going to make it as fair as possible, in the end of the day, a camera man or a camera a moto vehicle could still be as of assistance, right? So. Absolutely. I mean, it is also in an Iron Man sometimes, yeah. but it's a lot more kind of it wishy-washy and you're not necessarily next to Jan the whole time, whereas this time, Jan's your man, all the, everything's focused on him. It's, uh, it could change the outcome, basically. Yeah. I mean, the way I see this is, it was Jan's idea, he was always going for this world record, and this Lionel thing has been a bit of a bolt-on add-on, and a smart move, and I think it's really cool, because at the end of the day, it's going to keep Jan honest, it's yeah, going to push him. If, if Jan falters, if something, if he has a problem, he would just be going home and going, I'm not going to get the record. Now he's got Lionel breathing down his back, his neck, because let's face it, Lionel's going to be behind him out the swim. Um, and it's got to keep him honest. He's going to have to keep pushing. Otherwise, there's nothing for anyone to watch or anything. But at the same time, how much is Lionel bringing to the show if that doesn't happen, is Lionel just going to be doing his own thing? But I, I think background? this is the great thing about Lionel is you know he's not going to give up. And should I mean, this is the problem with an Ironman, it's such a long race, and should you see that Jan's not on pace for the world record, you kind of know that quite a long way out. But you've got Lionel chasing him down, and that's the exciting <laughs> thing. And then you're watching that race happening. Um, well, it could, it could be really enthralling, and certainly social media has decided it's going to be already. Uh, social media is blowing up, so the athletes are already not not losing, are they? Um, but a couple of things could happen. Someone could cramp, someone could get a puncture, and the whole thing just fizzles out like a damn squib. I feel like you need a bit of convincing yet, James. I mean, I'm there. I'm the big <laughs> fanboy. I'm there on the sidelines with the pom-poms. Uh, I, I think... probably need a bit more convincing. <laughs> well, with all the fancy new super shoes being released, how's this one, Mark? We've actually had this guy on the show before a while ago when he ran a 71-minute half marathon. Um, but now he's gone one better and run a 106.33 half marathon in Crocs. <laughs> he's wearing Crocs. That's insane. <laughs> I mean, I wonder how many of these carbon-plated super shoes finished behind him in that race. Oh, man. Well, I hate to tell you, James, I've actually gone ahead and bought some Crocs for us because I thought, what better presenter <laughs> challenge than us doing a mile rep each in a set of Crocs? How do you feel about that? I uh, said I'd never be seen dead in them. Yeah. But maybe we'll try a mile. I'm not they're, sure about a half marathon. They're pretty lightweight. I mean, and, and very breathable. They've got these little holes in the top. And if it does rain or you, you know, well, they're very practical. They certainly haven't given over any of their performance for style. So <laughs> uh, We're also excited to talk about Alice Deering, who is a British marathon swimmer who has just finished fourth at the marathon swimming qualification event out in Portugal. And with that, is set to become the first ever black woman to represent Team GB swimming. So quite a momentous moment. And also, she's a New Zest ambassador. So be excited, hopefully, to get her in on the channel in due course. But I think we'll let her get that small event out of the way first, hey? Okay, now for the tech news. And after weeks of teasing, On have finally released their super shoe, the On Cloud Boom Echo. And yes, don't worry, it does have carbon in it. After years of developing this shoe with their athletes and their team, it is finally here. And in their words, it is their fastest marathon shoe ever. Don't worry, we do have a full detailed video of this coming very soon, in which we actually even rip apart the midsole. Look at the internals, including the carbon, the bit that we're obviously all interested in. Now, the interesting thing with this shoe is that they have utilized their cloud tech technology, which obviously on are very famous for and have developed but they made obviously a number of prototypes for this shoe, some without the cloud tech, some with. What they found is by having that cloud tech technology in the forefoot, it allowed the forefoot to collapse more quickly, creating a nice stable platform and then allowing to push off from, which they say improved the running economy by further one and a half percent. Yeah, very interesting. Anyway, we're going to have a full detailed video on that very soon. As I've said, it comes in a weight of 220 grams and retailing at $270 and available literally now. Awesome. In other tech news, Nerve, the company that bought you a 
those smart insoles with pressure sensors and they connect to your smartphone. Well, they've updated their smart, smart insoles now um, and you can now track your foot strike live while you're running. So it'll send the data to your phone, which will send it to your watch and you can watch while you're running. The foot strike coach, as they call it, um, will give you live feedback on where you should be landing on your foot and how you should be improving that. It'll even set you an eight to 10 week program on how you can improve that foot strike and hopefully improve it forever, keep it there. Um, is that too much tech for your run? Well, no, I, I am sort of worried about it when if I was to go out running, if it would be just like, it'd be going mad every second. We'd go, no, 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 <laughs> doing computer says no, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'd be going down the street and this thing would be going mental. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Anyway, it gives you a lot of data on your run. And if you're into data and geeking out on data, maybe this is the tech for you. Mm, not sure it's the tech for me. And on to racing news from this week. We had Ironman 70.3 Des Moines in, in the US. Uh, the start was delayed by nearly three hours because of a thunderstorm rolling through the area. Um, thankfully, they did get the race underway after all the cancellations for the last year. Holly Lawrence taking the win there in the women's, uh, just ahead of Emma Pallant-Brown and uh, Jackie Herring in third. The bike leg was actually shortened due to the weather, so they did a normal 1.2 mile swim and then just a 25 mile bike and then a normal 13.1 mile run, uh, as you do. Um, but at least they got the race done. So on the men's side, USA's Jackson West took the win with a sub 70 minute uh, half marathon ahead of Colin Chartier and then Canada's Jackson Laundry rounding up the podium. Nice one. I've got to say, I mean, I'd probably jump at the opportunity to have a few more hours in bed in the morning before a 70.3. <laughs> Not that you probably would, you'd be sat there twiddling your thumbs, very nervous. But anyway, moving on now to Exterra Czech Republic, which I understand is an amazing course. Um, I'm going to read the names out here. So it's won by Arthur Sirius, uh, second Lucas Kuka, and third Arthur Forizier. On the women's side, it's won by Luanne Duvasson, uh, second Helena Erebova, and third Sandra Mehofer. And still in Europe, uh, at Challenge Gdansk, uh, Brit James Teagle surged to take a small gap into T2 on a very hot day. Um, that gap he managed to extend all the way through the run, running away with the win. So congrats to him. Um, he was followed by Matt, Matt Troutman from South Africa, um, who was just ahead of uh, Spain's Pablo de Pena. In the women's race, Saris de Vries was simply too strong for Brit's Lucy Hall, who, uh, who came second. Well, also last week we failed to discuss the Keltman results. Now, Keltman obviously being the sibling of Norseman, a very similar X Tri event, um, and actually the same event that Fraser took part in a couple of years back. Well, we had quite a race unfold. So, the first place male, Ewan Brown, clocked to 10.56.37, which over that kind of terrain is really flipping impressive. Um, he knocked a massive 43 minutes off Harry Wiltshire's previous record. On the women's side, we also had a record there. That was by Ailey Price. She clocked a 13 hours and eight minutes, um, just 11 seconds ahead of second place, but knocking further sort of around five minutes off the women's record. On to much shorter racing, much, much shorter racing <laughs> than Keltman. Um, on the super sprint racing, the European super sprint champs happened in Kitzbühel in Austria. Uh, this is in a, in a two day format. So they do a semi-final on day one and a final um, the next day. They had a, uh, 500 meter swim, 12K bike, and a 3.1K run. Uh, Switzerland's Max, Max Studer took the European title for the, for the men, with Germany's Laura Lindemann taking the title for the women. Uh, in the under 23s, Ricardo Batista from Portugal uh, won the under 23 title, with Valentino Rusova from Russia taking the women's. Uh, the British team actually won the mixed relay, which they had on the Sunday, um, which would be a good test event for the Olympics, except all the Olympic athletes are off getting ready for the Olympics. So it probably doesn't give us any information going into the Olympic mixed relay event. I'm afraid it doesn't really. But looking ahead now, and interestingly, Nicola Spurry placed fourth at that Super Sprint final. Uh, but she's going to be back in action this coming weekend at the European Middle Distance Champs at Challenge Kaiserwinkel Walshi, which always cracks me up that name. Um, but um, she's also going to be against the Ironman World Champion Annie Haug. Um, so obviously the 2012 Olympic champion and kind of showing that she's super versatile, which we know she is, trying kind of mixing up the disciplines ahead of Tokyo itself. Also coming up this weekend, another women's battle royale in triathlon um, at the 70.3 European Champs, which is happening on the same day as the other European champs on the same distance. Hey. <laughs> you, 
Anyway, Daniel Riff should be taking on Holly Lawrence and Lucy Charles Barkley, which is pretty pretty big battle as far as triathlon women go. So that'll definitely be one to watch. That is, yeah. I mean, Holly Lawrence backing it up weekend after night, so that's very impressive. Also, it's worth us keeping an eye on Ironman Coeur d'Alene, uh, where obviously we're going to have Lionel Sanders racing, but I mean, it'd be interesting to see where his form's at ahead of the old Jan versus Lionel battle. All right, now to take a look through all your photos and videos that you sent in to us. And the first one comes in from Arnold, um, from the south of France, from Lac de saint cross castle Cassio? Uh, I know. Done. I feel like I pronounce that quite well, but probably not at all. Um, he is trying out his new hoob wetsuit. And making sure he starts his watch before he <laughs> starts his swim. I thought he was just doing a really cool dive and showing off, but yeah, you're right. He's literally making sure he tracks that swim. The next, uh, next one we have is... Uh, from Christian, who in Lausanne, in the TT Swiss champs, and uh, clearly it was a bit of a hot day. Yeah, and they're looking like they're trying to get aero whilst cooling down. Like, mm. I don't know whether they're intending to do that, but they look like they're trying. Not sure whether that was before or after the race, actually. Uh, yeah, uh, but quite a nice bike. So, uh, Svelo P5, nice disc wheel, all color coordinated. I like it, very cool. Um, and finally, we have this photo from Josh showing off his lovely looking giant Propel SL2. Um, he says he's on the famous drift road in Windsor. Uh, so, first ride out using the rear wheel cover, cruising on the flats and enjoying that. Whoo, whoo, noise from the disc wheel. Um, but I was trying to see if it was one of the disc wheel covers we have made, but it looks a little bit more bro than mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's got proper rivets and all sorts on it, so uh, it looks good. Uh, probably not as good as mine though, but yeah. yeah. Good work there. But awesome. Uh, make sure you keep sending in your photos and videos using the photo uploader link, which is on screen right now. You can find that in the description just down below. And finally, we have the caption competition. Uh, so we'll review last week's one. It was this photo from uh, the World Triathlon in Mexico. Uh, the first uh, suggestion by Dan Haig was, you're never too old to play The Floor is Lava. <laughs> I bet you played that a few times with your kids. All the time. <laughs> um, Morton said, uh, the run you make when you didn't know Iron Man starts with a cannon. Um, SS said, when Lucy Charles tells them the men they only have a 10 second head start, they're off. And finally, which is, I think my winner for this week, I'm gonna sure choose it do. because sure Mark's biased. The, the winner of our caption competition, Shane Porteous, who said, when Mark stepped up to the microphone to sing beach karaoke. Well, I, get, I mean, I'm, I'm hurt. <laughs> I put everything into that, uh, that song last week, and this is how you, you return it. <laughs> anyway, uh, now for this week's caption comp photo, which is an absolute banger in my opinion. <laughs> Got to be careful what I say there, but anyway. Um, it's from the Ironman 70.3 Des Moines, um, and yeah, chat saying, run faster or I'll drop this sign, but we're going to remove that caption from his sign and now your opportunity to put your own caption on that sign and i'm going to suggest don't ask me to wave uh, i'm sure you can do a lot oh, better than mark's what? done there so fill in that sign and the best sign for next week wins well i'm afraid that is it for the show this week but don't worry we've got tons coming up we've got run drills and tips with tim don but the bit that i'm really looking forward to is a little presenter challenge that we got james involved in <laughs> for his very first video on the channel obviously the show will go out before but you guys will get to enjoy that this coming weekend and whilst you're doing that why not head on over to our gtn shop where you can get hold of some of these lovely t-shirts so don't forget to like and subscribe and uh it while you're here head over to some of our other videos we've made body weight versus bike weight or try heart rate zones do they differ between the disciplines <laughs>